So recently, the Dragon Ball Super manga dropped its 61st chapter, the long-awaited rematch between Moro and Vegeta, who has triumphantly returned from the planet Yardrat, armed with a big special technique that will allow him to defeat Moro once and for all. And in probably the only credit that I'll give to Toyotaro in this chapter is the fact that Vegeta still fucking loses, which is appropriate. Because Vegeta stands, as it has been scientifically proven, are some of the most annoying shitwads in the Dragon Ball fandom, and giving them any ground at all is just a bad move, so kudos for that, Toyotaro. And that's where all my praise is going to end, because sweet, merciful god, this is one of the worst turds the Dragon Ball franchise has dropped on us in a long, long time. Even by the rock-fucking-bottom poker in hell playing standards of the Toyotaro manga, this chapter is an absolute abomination. First, we shall begin with the retardism behind the mechanics of Vegeta's forced spirit fission. So after months upon months of speculation, what is this big epic technique that will change the way Dragon Ball fights happen for all time is? It's basically the spirit bomb, except Vegeta gets Genki out of you by punching you in the face. That is literally all it is. And my complaint with it isn't even that it's not particularly original, that's almost a footnote in the whole story. It's the fact that how the story chooses to jerk Vegeta off about attaining this technique at the expense of Goku that annoys me. Because Goku is already someone who knows how to draw Genki not just from people, but from animals and planets and suns as well. He is someone who already understands the fucking basic principles behind Vegeta's technique already, and yet the Toyotaro manga expects me to believe that Goku, who already fucking knows how to do Genki removal, isn't able to use forced spirit vision, despite the fact it's literally just a more forceful version of the Genki Dama. Which is par for the course, because Toyotaro hates Goku. He says he doesn't hate Goku, but he has to say that because... Having a guy work on an official Dragon Ball product who openly says he hates Goku would probably be a big marketing no-no. So instead, Toyotaro has to make Goku look like an incompetent moron at something he already knows how the fuck to do. Then there's the whole business with Moro. Moro has basically been a waste of space almost since the second or even third chapter he's appeared in. Very similar to Forced Spirit Vision, Toyotaro has no fucking idea what to do with him power-wise, so he just makes him a combo of the androids and a little bit of Cell, and now he literally looks like Cell. The new design is awful. It looks like some kind of crap a player would make as their avatar in a Xenoverse game. And yet these two things that I can complain about pale in comparison to the speech Piccolo makes about Vegeta. This is some of the worst dialogue ever in Dragon Ball. In a manga, a TV show, a movie, a video game, if it has the Dragon Ball brand name in it, this chapter officially has worse dialogue than any of it. This is Western superhero cape shit speechifying the theme because I'm too much of an incompetent moron to convey it in any other way type of writing. It was so painful to read and so illogical that I could not help but actually wince as I forced myself through it. So Piccolo's entire speech is just a longer, more ham-fisted version of the speech from the Boo arc, where he explains what Vegeta is doing. He wants to atone for his sins, he knows he's fucked up in the past, he's fighting to protect the Earth, he's changed, he's a better man now, he surpassed you, Goku. You don't change, but Vegeta does. And as I already stated, the first problem with this speech is that it's just a shittier version of the Boo arc speech where Piccolo already addresses what is going through Vegeta's head in an arc that does Vegeta atoning for his sins way, way better than this turd does. The second problem with it is that Vegeta angsting about his past does not fit Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball does not linger on the dark and negative implications of its story. That stuff happens, it's big and important in the moment, and then everyone just moves away from it. 
Very much like how Toriyama wrote every chapter from week to week to week, what happens in the now is the big and exciting thing, but as things quickly move along at a breakneck pace, they are forgotten about, or characters just get over it. And before someone tells me, well, in the Boo arc, Vegeta has a whole big speech where he angsts about his past. No, motherfucker. Vegeta angsts about his middle age crisis. He angsts about the fact that he thinks he was cooler and more badass in his youth, and that being on Earth has made him soft and weak. He does not give the slightest fuck about all the people he murdered. This whole concept of Dragon Ball needing to address the darker aspects of its characters and stories, quote-unquote, is a rabbit hole that should never be opened. As I already explained, it does not fit the style of the series. This is not a series that uh, angsts or lingers on this stuff. It just gets over it because the morality of this world is just not the same as our own. And that's what makes it fun and interesting and cool. And inserting dumb fanboy bullshit officially into the story like this just does not do any good. Because what's the next step after this? Are we gonna get a manga storyline focused on Gohan, sort of? Where Gohan's gonna call the old man out for not being there for him because fans think that needs to be addressed too? And I'm fully aware that some Dragon Ball fans would absolutely love that to happen because they have absolutely no fucking understanding of the tone and style of the series they purport to be fans of while also never reading or watching a second of anything pre-Raditz. The next point Piccolo says in Vegeta's favor is that Vegeta is not one to underestimate his enemies, and anyone with a single functioning brain cell can articulate why this is laughably stupid in numerous ways. Fuck me, the number of fights where Vegeta actually hasn't underestimated his enemy can be counted on one hand put through an alligator's mouth. If you wanted to say that Vegeta has calmed himself down finally and is not going to underestimate his enemies anymore, that would be one thing. But no, the story is trying to retroactively suck his dick, spanning decades worth of stories that outright contradict this very point. And then there's the cherry on top, that Goku does not change. He is a static character who's been the same since day one, while Vegeta's the one who goes through the big character arcs. Another dumb fanboy idea that has been regurgitated across the years, particularly in the West, by people who like to fillet Vegeta over Goku. Goku has factually changed in numerous different ways. Obviously, he can tell which sex someone is. He knows much more about the world than he did before. He's able to read people better than he was before, and he's actually showcased a lot of cunning and smarts over the years in and out of combat. And one of the biggest examples of Goku changing in just a span of one arc is in the Daimao storyline. Because at the beginning of that arc, Goku is bloody furious. He wants to get revenge for Krillin's death at any means necessary, and it repeatedly gets him his ass kicked over and over again. But then, after his training with Karin, Goku is able to chill out. He's still bloody furious. He still wants to kill Piccolo for everything he's done and everything he's taken away from him. But he's able to keep a cool head regardless of that. His anger is fueling him, but it's not controlling him anymore. And a similar thing happens on planet Namek, where Goku's better control over his anger eventually allows him to chill out during the Frieza battle and voluntarily quit at first, and his self-control even lets him show mercy to Frieza. These are subtle ways that Goku has absolutely changed. He is not the same stupid, pants-shitting retard Bulma found in the forests in 1984. So yeah, those are more or less all my thoughts about this current chapter. It's an atrocious turd. It reeks of some of the worst, most eye-rolling fanfiction tropes. And it's just one more fact that proves that everything after the Torment of Power was a fucking mistake.